All right, this video is Acids and Bases Part 3, Chapter 14. All right, so reactions of acids and bases, neutralization reactions. This is review from first semester, um, but an acid-base reactions are mixed that the proton from the acid combines with the hydroxide from the base to make water. So if our acid is HCl and our base is KOH, then what we really have in solution is H and chloride because it's strong. And then we also have potassium and hydroxide because it's strong. And then the H and the OH combine together to form the water. And we have potassium and chloride left over, and that makes the salt. So it's always going to be an acid plus a base gives water and a salt. And the salt is an ionic compound. That's what a salt is. That is comes from the cation from the base and the anion from the acid. So it's what's left over after we remove the hydrogen and the hydroxide. So one way to quantify the amount of acid or base in solution is to use a titration. And we did this right before the break. So solution stoichiometry can be applied using a titration. And a titration, a substance of known concentration, is reacted with another substance of unknown concentration. And so the goal of a titration is to discover what that concentration is. And so if we have HCl and NaOH, we get water from the OH and the H, and then that leaves behind sodium chloride as the salt. And that's the lab that we did the week before uh, spring break. All right, so we're gonna look at an acid-base titration, and the acid is put into the flask, and it's only showing the H plus because it doesn't wanna clutter it up. But in there is also the chloride ions and the water molecules, um, and it's just so that you can actually see what's happening. And in the hydroxide solution that we're going to look at on the next slide, the sodium ions and the water molecules have been removed as well. So we have the sodium hydroxide in here, and so it's just showing the OHs in the burette. And then in the flask is the H+. And as the OH is added to the flask, the OH reacts with the hydrogen ions and produces the H2O molecules. And then after all of the H plus is gone, the solution turns pink because it reaches a certain pH and um, the indicator then turns pink. So the little drops of phenolphthalein that you had put in there. So at the equivalence point, it turns pink and neither reactant is in excess. And so then we can figure out, well, how many moles of this did I have to add to get there? and we can calculate the concentration of the acid. All right, so as the OH is added, it reacts and neutralizes the H, making water. And at the equivalence point, that's when the number of moles of OH equals the number of moles of H, the titration is completed. And it's usually signaled by an indicator that changes color depending on how much acid is in the solution. If we carefully measure the volume of each solution, then we can calculate the unknown concentration of either the acid or the base. So this was the, a picture of a titration happening. And as it went through, so this is before, and then this is during, and this is at the end. And so at the end of the titration, the solution remains pink because all of the H plus is gone, the acidity changed, and the indicator turned pink. And that's the indicator that they used here. It's the same one we used in lab. All right, so an acid-base titration calculation. Um, and you've done these two. You did it in the last chapter, but just to review it real quick. Uh, the titration of 10 milliliters of HCl of unknown concentration. So we don't know what the concentration of HCl is. And it required 12.54 milliliters of a 0.1 molar NaOH solution to reach the equivalence point. What is the concentration of the unknown HCl? So the first thing I have to do is I have to write a chemical reaction to see how they're related to each other. So I have HCl plus NaOH, and that's going to make NaCl plus H2O. So outside with outside, inside with inside. And so they're all going to be one to one. So that's balanced. And I have 12.54 milliliters of the 0.1 molar NaOH. And I have 10 milliliters of this. And I want to find the concentration of HCl. So you start with the information that you know most about. 
and you're going to start with the one that doesn't have any units in the denominator. So this molarity is moles per liter, so I'm not going to start with that. I'm going to start with the milliliters. So I have 12.54 milliliters of NaOH, and there are 1,000 milliliters in one liter. And then I know I have 0.1 moles of NaOH for every single liter. So that right there will cancel out liters and milliliters, and I'm still left with moles of NaOH. So I have my relationship between NaOH and HCl to go from here to here. So one mole of NaOH is equal to one mole of HCl. So this would then give me moles of HCl because all of my other units, moles of NaOH, cancel out. So the unit that's left is moles of HCl. So this would end up being 0 0.001254 moles of HCl. And remember, guys, molarity is equal to moles of the solute divided by liters. And the liters of the HCl is 0 0.01 liters because 10 milliliters is 1,000 milliliters in one liter, so that's 0 0.010 liters. If I divide 0 0.001254 by 0 0.01 liters, I end up getting 0 0.1254 molar HCl. All right, one more example. So what is the concentration of H2SO3 if 25 milliliters of this acid required 17.23 milliliters of 1.5 molar KOH? So first I have to write my reaction. So there's my acid and base, and I know that that's going to make water. That's going to get rid of these. And then it's going to make the salt from those two ions. So it would be K2SO3. Now I need to balance it. So in order to balance it, um, I'm going to need two of these, and that would make two waters. So it's always going to make water. It's never going to make something crazy like H3O4 or some weird stuff. It's always going to make water. Okay, and I've got 17.23 milliliters of 1.5 molar KOH and 25 milliliters of H2SO3. All right, so I'm going to start with what I know most about, and I'm going to start with the one that does not have any units in the denominator. So this is moles per liter. So I'm going to start with milliliters because there's no units in the denominator. So I have 0 0.01723 liters. I'm going to stop converting between milliliters and liters. I'm going to assume that you guys can do that. And that's 1.5 moles of KOH per every single liter. Now, in my reaction, I have two moles of KOH reacting with every one mole of H2SO3 because I need to get over here because I want the molarity of that. That's what I'm looking for. So there's two moles of KOH per every single one mole of H2SO3. And so that will give me moles of H2SO3. So that gives me 0 0.01292. And then that will be divided by 0 0.025 liters because that's in milliliters, so we have to move the decimal back three places. We have to divide it by 1,000, and I get 0.5169 moles of H2SO3 per liter of solution. And that's it.